Hello, welcome once again. We're going to discuss about check engine lights and we're going to discuss diagnostic codes. Now, you're familiar with, if you've been watching these videos on the channel, the PCM, which is the main computer board on your car, or it's called sometimes the ECM or ECU, depending on the, the make and model of your car. But basically, that computer <clears throat> is like the black box of, of an airplane. <clears throat> it has all the information, the data, the time, and everything that has been occurring. So when we want information, we extract information from that black box or that PCM module, that computer module. Now, <clears throat> there are diagnostic codes, obviously, when there is a fault code or a trouble code, it's, it's referred to. And you've all seen it. It's like starts with a letter and then four digits, P1106, P1126, whatever the code is. Now, <clears throat> that is a fault code. Now, that's stored in the memory of the computer. Now, in order to extract that information, the code, you could have a code reader or you could have a scanner, which is obviously more costly and has more data, but needs more knowledge of the system and how fuel injection works. The basic, let's say, from this textbook that I use, which is called Automotive Technology, like I said, over 20 years ago, and the basis, the foundation has not changed for me. Now, remember, in those days, 20 years ago, when I went to school, we didn't have YouTube videos or things like that to teach. We had to learn from hard copy books. Now, let's say you put a scanner, a scan tool, whatever the, the, the type is, it doesn't matter. It's going to give you information about sensors, about things that are on, and things that are off. Motors, pumps. So let's say ignition advance, which is something related to ignition, uh, the timing of the ignition, 14 degrees, let's say, sensor, mass airflow sensor, it's going to tell you grams per second. That's what GM stands for. How much air, how much air is going through the mass airflow sensor. So it knows how to calculate fuel. So then long fuel, uh, fuel trims that the computer corrects if there's too rich or too lean, um, it'll, it'll either give more fuel or less fuel to the fuel injectors. Basically, the idea here is I'm just trying to show you is there's much data. Oxygen sensor, bank one, uh, sensor one, bank two, uh, uh, sensor two, injector, injector, the time it's on, 3.3 milliseconds, intake air, air control, uh, uh, a motor. Anyway, fuel pressure up, EGR system is off or on fuel pump is it on or off it's on evap purge is it on or off it's off so basically i'm just telling you you can see many many things now if there's no check engine light do i need to go to a scan tool as you can see it's very very uh, um important to go to one okay so then you know if fuel pump is on or off you just can't hear for the noise of it or the relay is on or off now Let's go to oxygen sensor, and you'll, then you'll, I'll illustrate my point, and you understand exactly what I'm referring to. Okay, welcome back. So we were discussing about diagnostic codes and check engine lights. To illustrate a point, this is an O2 sensor, O2 sensor, okay? Oxygen sensor that you're all familiar with, especially before inspection. You cannot pass inspection of a car, obviously, and not get an inspection sticker, a new one, if you have a check engine light. Check engine light means something is wrong with the emissions. Either, like you see, hydrocarbons, over here it's parts per million, carbon uh, CO is carbon monoxide in percentage, oxides of nitrogen, 13 parts per million. There are specifications, obviously, whatever comes out of the exhaust and the car obviously it has to be within limits for proper emissions now if you're not familiar with a scope and you never seen anything a signal or whatever this will be something new to you okay a proper signal this almost looks like a sine wave a proper signal of an oxygen sensor 
And it tells you, the book tells me, or the textbook tells me, all this information, you can, obviously you can figure out yourself. The engine types, all these things, operating temperature, vacuum, uh, uh, um, EVAP system, my, mileage, all these things you put in to the, uh, the scanner. But sometimes it detects it automatically. You don't even have to put in all these things, the model and all these things. But let's say from zero volts to one volt, and the midpoint is around 0.5 volts or 0.45 volts, which is the average. Or a 0.4 volts is equal to 489 millivolts, which is around here. Okay, the midpoint, let's say. And so we're going we're gonna to open it up to 2500 RPM. We're going to look at this signal. Now, again, you're not familiar with scopes. You're not familiar with signals. So you're going to ask, what am I looking at? I don't understand what I'm looking at. This is a good oxygen sensor. In order to know if an oxygen sensor is working properly, you have to look at the signal because it has to be peaks up and peaks low. This is a peak. So the highest level is called the peak. The maximum peak and the minimum peak. This is the minimum. This is the maximum. This is positive. All this is positive. However, below 0.45, this goes to 0.2 or uh, uh, 0.1 volts, even below. Now, it's telling you if you crank it to 2500 RPM, this is a good signal that you should see. It is a good signal. How do I know? I don't. I never seen a signal before. I never used a scope before. How do I know it's good or bad? You're looking for these little sine waves, okay? Okay. You're not looking for any glitches or things like that. And everything should be even. In other words, all should be here. This is called rich. This is called the lean zone. Rich means too much fuel. Lean means too little fuel, too much air. So everything should be equal here, here, and here. Below the, the midpoint, below the midpoint, and above the midpoint. Now, why am I bringing this up? Okay. Again, a person, the viewer, doesn't understand this. Let's look at a bad oxygen sensor, okay? Here's a bad oxygen sensor, and here's a good one. Let me zoom out. Now, again, you don't have to understand anything about signals about oxygen sensors, but what do you pick up on right away? You pick up on this hash. This is a problem. This oxygen, tells, oxygen sensor output tells you there's a problem, right? This is nice and even, this is all messy and, and hash and, and, and over here, from here to here. What's the problem over here? As you can see, it's called a misfire, ignition misfire. Misfire means when you have a, sometimes a cylinder not firing. If you have eight cylinders, one cylinder is not firing. Sometimes you can have a random misfire. Sometimes you can have a specific misfire. Let's say uh, a cylinder number one is not is not firing, meaning you don't have fuel or you don't have enough spark or bad compression or uh, uh, um, other damage that's been uh, um, done. Therefore, this is not good, obviously. We want to see all this. You do not see this over here. You see all black and all these peaks. Obviously, misfire stops. Where does it start from? Where does the misfire start? From here till here is the misfire. It's a bad part. Up to here, it's running good. All of a sudden, ignition, misfire begins, boom, over here. And this is what you get. And it takes a little time until it recovers and the oxygen sensor normalizes. So this is an ignition misfire. Okay? Again, it takes two seconds to return to proper operation. You see this? Two seconds. Then it goes back. So this is show showing you you have to look at the oxygen sensor output. Okay? The check engine light is telling you if it's bad enough, there's a misfire. Now let's compare it to another one. This is ignition. Let's say the spark, no spark or something. Let's look at another one. Look at this one. We said they have to be even, a little more up. You see how these peaks are not linear with these. You see these? These peaks are all the way down. Let me go back up. You see these peaks? Even. From here to here is even. Look from here. This signal is pulled down. Look at the difference. These peaks over here are here. 
these peaks are pulled down one box interval they're pulled down not good let's look at another one here let's compare you see this now all the peaks are all the way up high this is too rich condition too rich over here that's why everything is on the high side above the midpoint now a check engine light like we said check engine light when you have a check engine light a check engine light will give you obviously if there's a fault code the trouble code if it's steady sometimes it's an amber amber light so whenever you get a chance you do you take care of it if that check engine light is blinking that tells you you have to pay attention you have to take care of this problem right away when a light blinks at you it's trying to get your attention just like a traffic light when you cross the street it blinks and blinks and blinks to catch your attention so is also the check engine light the amber light when you notice your instrument panel there are lights in red lights in orange or amber they call it the red lights i said a safety belt your seat belt i'm sorry seat belt or uh the braking system is in red because that's a safety issue you have to take care of it right away put on that the seat belt the check engine light is not red it's amber like we said but if it blinks you can think of it as being red so there might be damage to catalytic converter or something like that that's why it's blinking to get your attention now like we said so the normal the average is here and from zero to one is normal it's considered normal however you will not detect a check engine light because sometimes this falls within the range if it falls within the range the sensor is saying hey i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing i'm not going above one volt i'm not going below zero volt i'm in the normal range anything from here to here is normal even though this is not normal because your senses are misfire it's good you're going to get a code obviously but the 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 thing that i want to tell you is about let's say any any sensor any sensor once you get a code from a check engine light it's not hard because it's going to tell you let's say tps sensor below of is low voltage okay or something is high voltage it's going to tell you that okay fine we're in the normal range over here even though this is not normal this is not normal at all obviously therefore since it's not normal right not always are you going to get a trouble code depending on the how many cycles it's being done the defect let's say for example let's go over here and i drew this let's say you have a sensor any sensor okay doesn't matter tps mass airflow sensor that you'll stall or tps that you'll uh, also stall or not be able to to uh, crank let's say this is a sensor with imaginary view uh, 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 values okay one volt over here okay the the average is 0.5 volts that's what usually i see with a sensor again doesn't matter type of sensor just uh uh to give you an example this is normal 0.5 volts 0.2 volts is the low threshold i call it the upper threshold is one volt i do not have a check engine light in this sequence okay why let's say i put the scanner on and i look at the sensor okay and I usually I see 0.5 volts in the scanner, but I don't see a check engine light. But I did. It does show me 0.9 volts. Now, is 0.9 volts enough to give me a code, a fault code? No, not in this situation. This example. Why? Because it did not go above the the threshold. One volt or more, 1.1 volt, 1.2 volt will give me a code. Or 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 will give me a cold because I'm low in value or I'm in high in value. But 0.9 volt is not is not higher than this, than the upper threshold. But this is where a mechanic is different and an automotive technician is different from a mechanic. Automotive technician picks up on things. Not necessarily everything is a check engine light you have to pick up on these things that 0.5 volt usually it's average usually the sensor is like that but 0.9 volt is a little high not enough to trigger a code because it's not on this 
threshold, but it is suspicious. And that tells me maybe this faulty component sensor is starting to break down. So you have to pick up on little things like this. Let's say this is 0.5 and this is always 0.3. You'll say, well, it's within the threshold, within the specs. I don't have no check engine light. No worry, no problem, no. Pay attention to, it should be 0.5 and it's 0.3. It should be 0.5 and it's 0.9. Pay attention to these things and you will pick up on things and you'll be able to diagnose much better. Now, another point to illustrate. We have two oxygen sensors before the, uh, before the cattle converter and afterwards. Before, we're going to see this, what I just explained to you. Rich and lean, rich and lean, up and down, up and down. If the, oxygen, if the cattle converter is working correctly, well, we'll see almost a flat line. That means it's doing its job. If you see peaks again, that means catalytic converter is not doing its job. Now, how do you know an oxygen sensor is good or not good? You can always put take the air, air intake chamber. You could put propane through it, and that's a rich power enrichment, as we said. The oxygen sensor should go rich. If you put a vacuum leak, you take off one of the vacuum hoses that's lean or air, more air, that oxygen sensor should go lean. Okay? Now, another point to be made, 